everybody, this is Claire with Local Tasting Tours. We've had a great start to our 2013 season. We have three tours running. They will be running until the 20th of October. So today's podcast, we're at Edna Restaurant on Goddard Street, and I'm here with owner Jenna Moores. You guys have been open about a month, and tell me what it's been like since you've been open. It has been fabulous, and honestly beyond my wildest projections had really, really great responses from Jane's regulars as well as a, as a hugely positive response from the neighborhood. About 90% of the people that come through the door say, oh, I just live right up the street. Oh, so, and so that great. has been really special. Well, that's a wonderful thing about and that seems to me like I also live really nearby. Yeah. It's a really kind of small, like community-based place and that this area doesn't have that kind of thing. Like kind of continuing that the Jane's Brooklyn Warehouse in a neighborhood tradition, I think. That's it. I feel like... Um, Traditionally, Halifax has been a bit bit separated. From my experience living in other cities, I've found when you have that mix of commercial and residential is what really creates a community, where when you have a coffee shop to get your coffee in the morning and somewhere to grab a glass of wine at the end of the night, that's within walking distance that allows you to bump into your neighbors and meet people in your neighborhood. You know, I really feel like it really contributes to creating a sense of community in this place. So our guest today is Melanie Stone, Halifax musician. Melanie's part of a lot of different projects. You recently just were part of the CD release for Dark for Dark. Yes. And what kind of other stuff do you have in the film? I'm in a, in a band. <laughs> and, and not an exclusively a, a lady band, but a band made of ladies, with Emily, uh, with my friend Rebecca Zolkauer and Jess Lewis. And we released a CD in May of this year. And then I sing with a band called The Heavy Blinkers, and we're trying to release a CD this summer as well. So that's been the focus. Yeah, The Blinkers is that. That's a, is that a double CD? It's not. Okay. It, would, it would be a double vinyl if we put it on vinyl. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a long one. Um, and it's been a long time coming. It's a project that was started about seven years ago. Okay. And it's just being being finished and sent out to the world now. So it's pretty exciting. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we have two dishes here. Yeah, Jenna, why don't you tell us a bit about these, these two dishes? Sure. So first we have the Atlantic Bouillabaisse. It's um, sort of a classic bouillabaisse. Did a little bit of a twist on. Uh, it's got scallops, shrimp, mussels, uh, chorizo, fresh corn, uh, pan-seared halibut, grilled toast, bit of saffron, sugar snap peas. It's got a little bit of a almost sort of Spanish aroma to it with a bit of saffron and the chorizo sausage, but all uh, locally sourced fresh Atlantic seafood. And uh, with a homemade focaccia up there on the side as well. Totally gorgeous. Well, let's taste it. So the chorizo is from Ratino, okay. which is right across gorgeous. the street. I always tell folks um, we spent um, seven months renovating this place, and um, it was so great to have Ratino across the street. We're having the classiest worksite lunches. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, with the plumbers and the electricians sitting down eating wine, you know, duck prosciutto. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's amazing. Really amazing. You can really taste how the corn really flavors the broth. Eh? It's one of my favorite dishes because it's so simple and it's all about just really fresh, properly cooked seafood. My past experience with Boy Base is just watching Julia Child make it in black and white on DVDs from the library. This is a much more real to life experience. Oh my gosh. That's classic though. It's everything I thought it would be. Our fresh oysters right now, we're getting to a couple different suppliers. We're changing our menu so often because we're sourcing local. You can't always, you know, sort of guarantee that, that consistency of quantity. With that being said, you know, the structure of the menu often remains the same. However, the sides will change depending on do we have beets or do we have parsnips or uh, we'll sort of switch it up. That's such a wonderful way to put together a menu though. You know, it's fun for us as a staff, as front of house, even as servers, to, to you know, to learn more about food. So carpaccio is a very lightly seared beef uh, that's sliced nice and thin, so it's next to raw in the middle. This is a grass-fed beef from PEI. We've got horseradish lemon creme fraiche, a little black olive tapenade on the side, parmesan, and these are yellow beet chips. And the tapenade adds this sort of, um, Bit of salt too. This is this your concept of a menu, Jenna? Robert and I worked pretty closely together. I mean, our inspiration for the menu really sort of came out of the way that him and I like to eat out, which is I like to try a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why we decided to sort of incorporate fresh oysters, cheese platters, charcuteries, keeping things sure. light, playful, relatively simple, but with really high quality local ingredients. 
what do you think of the carpaccio? I, I took, I think I took a lot of Parmesan with it, but very, very flavorful. And I'm, I don't eat a lot of beef, and I certainly don't eat a lot of carpaccio. Jenna, do you find that the concept of kind of sharing the way that you design the menu informs the way that anyone comes into the restaurant? You know, somebody who's not accustomed to sharing or family style, having that experience, it, does it kind of inform them when they come in and they see everyone doing that? I think it definitely opens it up yeah. for folks to have that experience. Because um, I, I really think that people are looking for that interactive dining experience these days. I, you know, I like to say that we're beyond the point of coming to a restaurant and sitting at your little table alone and, you know, your food arrives and you have no idea where it came from, you know. Yeah. That's why we have a semi-open kitchen. People want to see what's going on back there. And I think mm -hmm. people want to talk about the food they're eating. They want to know about it. They want to, you know, go that, that next step. I hope that it, you know, is, is allowing people who aren't so accustomed to, to having those dining experience to do so, and I've seen it happen. I noticed you have a communal table, which is unusual for Halifax restaurants and fantastic. I mean, people, people talk to each other. loving our communal table. <laughs> I thought about it for quite a long time. I remembered something that happened at Jane's on the Common. It was one of the first restaurants in Halifax to do a long bench. With yep. tables that were pretty close together, that was, that was a new thing for Halifax. We got a lot of feedback on the bench, the tables are too close to the this and that, but over the years, people started to love that bench. And the most magical moments that I witnessed in that restaurant were complete strangers pushing their tables together at the end of the night. I we even saw somebody offer somebody else a bite of chocolate cake off their plate to like an envious onlooker at the table next to them. And you know, these, these friendships were formed and relationships were built based on just sitting beside each other and sharing a meal. So fun. Melanie, do you have a favorite local band? There are lots, lots like too many, too many. Stuart Legier, I'm biased, a friend, we perform together sometimes. Kind of, a, I guess, an actor first, who works with Super Theater. Um, so I met him through that crowd, but he's working on a debut record, and he's just an incredibly talented singer-songwriter. He's got a really interesting voice in terms of his own writing, but his actual singing voice is more or less overheard. So we'll just end with a couple of questions. Do you have a favorite food from your childhood, Jenna? My mom was a single mother. She worked nine to five. We always cooked a big Sunday dinner, and we always had different friends and families and boyfriends and whoever over during those Sunday dinners, and I think that's sort of what resonates with me the most. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to say one of my favorite childhood dishes that my mom would make is, um, it's my Aunt Mary's seafood stew in a puff pastry. What's it called? Those little puff pastry shells with the tops on them? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I remember Sunday dinners, but usually they were cooked by my grandparents. And my father's parents made a lot of corned beef, dumplings, like we have meals that were all in one pot. And um, we would all kind of crowd around the small table, so those are nice memories. Bo -bo. That's what it's called. Bo -bo. Bo -bo. Bo -bo. Bo -bo. The wow. pastry it came to me. That's amazing. <laughs> Bo -bo. Bo -bo. And uh, do you have a favorite local business, either of you, that you like to frequent? There's a coffee shop across the street, directly across the street from my house. Well, I can't pronounce the restaurant. Kind of like, it's kind of like a, a secret coffee shop. Is there a, a sign? Yeah. On a, a Grigolette. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. But through my people, I can see if they're open or not. And they're usually open until 11 p.m. All things considered, and they open early in the morning. They have a beautiful kitchen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.